Subnautica's been out of early access for over six and a half years now, and in that time, the community has come to a general consensus about most things. The hoverfish is adorable, glitches go burr, and reaper leviathans are absolutely terrifying. However, there are definitely some things I disagree with, and those are what I would like to share with you today. Just a quick disclaimer that these are my opinions and are therefore indisputable in every way. If you do happen to disagree with something I say, don't feel too bad. I mean, we can't all be perfect. With that out of the way, here's a look at some of my unpopular Subnautica opinions. After exiting your life pod for the very first time, you'll likely begin looking for resources in the safe shallows caves. It's here that you'll encounter your first main threat, this red ball of explosive rage known as the Crashfish. A quick Google search will tell you that this guy is quite infamous in the Subnautica community, and not in a good way. It's this blatant hatred of the Crashfish that I just don't understand. Yes, it can hurt you, but this damage is rarely enough to be life-threatening. It's also ridiculously easy to avoid if you know what you're doing. Just swim directly at them and they won't be able to turn around fast enough to get you. Or just get a sea glide and outrun them. Unless you're a speedrunner, in which case these things are actually pretty dangerous, there just isn't really much of a reason to hate the crash fish. As you start progressing through Subnautica, you're going to need a lot of different materials, but copper and silver are both considered pretty hard to get. For silver in the early game, this actually makes sense. Sandstone outcrops can be pretty difficult to find, and only have a 37.5% chance to give you silver. Copper, on the other hand, is much easier to get. Limestone can be found literally everywhere in the safe shallows, with the giant tube corals being an especially good spot. It also has a 50% drop chance, meaning you can get a lot just from looking for titanium. Once you get a prawn suit, getting copper is even easier, with large quantities of the stuff in the mushroom forest, blood kelp trench, and around that sea dragon skull in the Lost River, just to name a few spots. If you spend a little time in the right places, you can easily get all of the copper you'll ever need. Once you get a hold of a few blueprints, you'll find there's a lot of different tools to choose from. Some, such as the Sea Glide and Survival Knife, remain trusty staples of every player's inventory, while other tools sort of get pushed aside. Potentially the most underrated of these is the Pathfinder tool. While forgotten by most of the community, the Pathfinder tool essentially trivializes exploration, allowing you to navigate small caves and wrecks with ease. While this is already a good quality of life improvement for normal gameplay, the importance gets turned up to 11 in hardcore mode, where getting disoriented in a wreck even once could lead to the death of your run. Combine that with the fact that you can essentially get this thing right from the start, and you have one of the most underrated tools in the entire game. Okay, creatures that people are scared of. Reaper Leviathans, yep, that one makes sense. Ghost Leviathans, yeah, I wouldn't want to run into one of those in the middle of the ocean. And Crab Squids? These little guys? I just don't get how people find these things scary. Sure, they do decent-ish damage, if they ever get close enough to actually hit you, that is. You can easily outrun these guys in most vehicles, or even with a sea glide if you need to. And as long as you keep your lights off, they don't seem to bother you all that much. I honestly wouldn't even say crab squids are the most dangerous non-leviathan. Warpers have given me way more of a headache than they ever will, and lava lizards are much more aggressive and will often hunt in groups. Other than the slightly unnerving appearance, crab squids just aren't scary. This one might be less of an unpopular opinion and more so a disagreeing with a loud minority, but either way, there seems to be a lot of people who think the Cyclops is useless, and I just don't agree. Sure, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but its versatility more than makes up for it. As someone who loves mining and base building, the ability to transport thousands of materials can't be overstated. Combine this with the ability to have grow beds and dock a vehicle, and you essentially have a small base that you can take to any part of the map. People have said that it's too big to pilot, and while I'm not trying to say skill issue, 
I take this thing down to the blood kelp trench all the time, and the only problem I have is my potato of a brain forgetting where the entrance to the Lost River is. I guess you could argue that you could speed through most of the game with just a prawn suit, but I think there's a lot more to Subnautica, and a lot of other games in fact, than just trying to get to the end credits as fast as possible. Subnautica's Cyclops is a great vehicle for mining, building, exploring, and just experiencing everything this beautiful game has to offer. Okay, let's say you've cured the Kara, built the rocket, and are looking for something to do. A challenge that a lot of people mention is trying to kill every single ghost, reaper, and sea dragon in the entire game. Now personally, I don't think this is worth all the effort, and let me explain why. First, I should clarify that I'm not against killing any leviathans. Battling a reaper here and there always makes a fun challenge, and dispatching, say, the ghost leviathan in the Lost River can make exploring the region much easier. But when it comes to killing all the leviathans, I just feel it makes the rest of the game a bit boring. Take the dunes, mountains, and crash zone, for example. All three of these biomes are chock full of reapers, and it's a big part of why these places are so fun to explore. If you kill all the reapers, you remove the main focal point of the three biggest biomes, making a large portion of your map kind of boring. This also applies to the Lost River and Lava Zones. They just feel a bit empty if you kill everything. I'd much rather be able to use the Leviathans as cool base spots, or a fun challenge every now and then as opposed to just killing them all. Back in the early days of my YouTube journey, my channel was mostly about base building. I mainly used nuclear reactors, but had always heard people talking about how good thermal power was. So one day, I decided to give it a go, only to realize it's terrible. I mean, this might legitimately be the worst power source in the game. Solar panels are cheap and good for anywhere in the shallows, bioreactors aren't the best, but are a good option for new players trying to keep the lights on at night. Nuclear is expensive, but it'll let you charge 50 ion power cells and run a NASA supercomputer without breaking a sweat. And then there's thermal. On the surface, it seems pretty good, unlimited free power at a reasonable material cost. But there's two main problems. First is the actual number of places you can use this. You either have to put your base next to one of these heat geysers, or spend more resources on power transmitters. The other problem is the actual power generated, or lack thereof. At best, thermal plants only generate around 40% the power of a nuclear reactor, and since most places in the game don't get that hot, your numbers are likely to be a lot worse. In my case, four thermal plants placed directly on lava weren't even enough to power this medium-sized base. At that point, the materials would have just been better spent on a reactor. I get not having to do maintenance is nice, but to me, it isn't enough to justify how expensive and temperamental thermal power can get. Now, I love the Subnautica community, but if there's one thing that really grinds my gears, it's how much people love to hate on Below Zero. Like, I'll agree that the first one is better, but from the way people talk about it, you'd think this was the worst thing to happen since the World Wars. The game certainly isn't without its issues. The story is lackluster, the map is kinda small, and there were some cut corners that remind me of how I edit videos six hours before they're supposed to go up. But on the other hand, the gameplay and exploration are just what you'd expect from a Subnautica game. The world is absolutely beautiful, having in my opinion the two best biomes from either game, along with a killer soundtrack to boot. The additions for base building are also nice, and almost make the first game's selection look a bit limited by comparison. Even though the first Subnautica game is, and will likely always be, my favorite game in the series, I still enjoy Below Zero. Despite all its faults, it's still a pretty darn good game, and it'll always have a place in my Steam library. I don't like to ask all the time, but YouTube says only around 5% of my viewers are actually subscribed, so if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. It helps out more than you might think, and your support never goes unnoticed. Anyways, that's all from me for now. I hope to see you all again very soon.